Jason, that's the thing. Netflix has kind of left a bad taste in our mouth. Hi, Kelly. Good to be with you. Yes, uh, Netflix certainly left a bad taste in most folks' mouths, especially as it pertains to uh, technology. But, you know, we think despite the volatility in tech, despite the drawdown, despite the fact that the group has been unloved for about six months or so, and despite those weak uh, numbers from Netflix, we think <laughs> investors should continue to own large cap secular growth tech for the long term. And I want to stress own, not trade, because over the coming days, weeks, and even months, the, the group's probably going to remain a bit choppy, given the fact that investors are still trying to get their hands around when inflation is going to peak and cool off and what's the path of Fed policy, how steep is it going to be, and more importantly, how far are yields going to back up? What does 2023 look like? These are all a bunch of unknown um, uh, answers right now, and that's going to keep tech probably on a short, leaf, short leash for now. But again, owning these great companies long term, especially at these valuations, we think makes a lot of sense. I wonder, I mean, it's pretty obvious that the different... Lumping all these companies together no longer really serves much purpose. The differentiation this year has right. gotten even more dramatic, with Netflix and Meta down more than 40 percent. Apple, relatively speaking, hanging in there down 11 percent. Who has the most to gain or the most to lose this week? Yeah, that's a great question and a great way to think about it is segmenting out these companies into different groups. And, you know, we're, we're pretty excited for the Google quarter. We think they're going to show a pretty decent upside uh, to to consensus estimates. One, because Google manages their quarters very well. But two, not only is this a structural growth story, but there is a bit of a cyclical element to, to Google's business with digital advertising. We didn't really know that going into the pandemic. We now know that after living through a pandemic that there, there was a step down, a slowdown in that business. And we think that there's probably still upside and analysts are catching up to that name. We're also pretty excited about Apple later this week. And we think Amazon, just given the... Um, you know, the stock hasn't done anything in almost two years, and everyone's pretty negative on it. It's trading at two and a half times forward revenue estimates, or at least our revenue estimates. So we think there's probably upside in those three quarters as we look at over the next few days. One of the things that I think is interested in, interesting in your analysis is as you look at some of those established tech names that you just mentioned, uh, and you compare their multiples with other companies like a Procter & Gamble, like a Coca-Cola, right. you go, which would you rather have, uh, an A or a, or a P and G? I, I, I guess I'd rather go with the tech names, thinking that they have a, a greater growth future. Yeah, Tyler, I'm glad you brought that up, because if you look over the near term, those defensive names still look well positioned, just given the economic slowdown and given the heightened fear in the market. But when you take a step back and back out the aperture a little bit, and you say, you know what, but I rather own Google at 22 times forward earnings, a great secular growth story with a huge economic moat, or would I rather own Procter & Gamble at 29 times earnings? This is basically a nominal GDP story with probably margin pressure due to a, a, you know enduring inflation. To us, the answer is very simple. If you look out over the next two, three, and five years, which one makes sense? A lot of the um, outperformance from FANG of the last few years has now been worked off and valuations have reset, it, except these businesses have done so much better than some of these slower growth businesses. So just making those comparisons, Microsoft versus Walmart, you know, Apple versus utilities now trading at 22 to 25 times earnings, for us doesn't make a lot of sense. Again, near term, they might work out being more defensive, but longer term, we think you own the better company.